So this is an introduction to Lean Six Sigma. Before we get started, I wanted to mention that if you're interested, there's a free Lean Six Sigma certification course available at sixsigmasociety.org. Okay, so Lean Six Sigma, all it is is a method for improving our business processes. Now, a business is going to have a lot of processes. It could be things like checking out customers, shipping orders, preparing reports, or handling customer support calls. These are all examples of business processes, and businesses have lots of them. Now, it's important first to distinguish between a process and a project. A process is something that's ongoing. We pretty much do it the same way every day. A project, those are things that are temporary. We don't do them all the time. They typically have a start and a finish that's defined. Here's an example. A process might be to ship orders. We pretty much do that the same way all the time. A project might be to build a brand new website. That's not something we do very often. Okay, now there's two primary goals of Lean Six Sigma. The first is to remove waste in our processes, that's lean. And the second is to reduce variation, that's Six Sigma. So let's talk about an example of those two things uh, at a fast food restaurant. So let's say we make a hamburger and we put pickles on it. We give it to the customer, but we find out they didn't actually want pickles. And so what happens is they bring the hamburger back to us, we throw it out, and we make another one. That's an example of waste in our business processes, and we want to eliminate that. Now let's talk about variation. Now in the case of the soda, on average they say there should be about 17% syrup uh, in an ideal soda. Now the question is, how much do we vary from that target? Are we sometimes at 10% syrup, and other times at 30%? That's a lot of variation. What we'd like to do is to reduce that so we get a consistently good soda every time. So now let's talk about lean in a little more detail. So in lean, our goal is to eliminate waste, and waste is often called muda in Lean Six Sigma. That's the Japanese word for waste. So waste is anything that does not add value for the end customer. And we talk about seven types. The first is transportation. That's the unnecessary movement of materials in a process. Then there's inventory. That's having more raw materials than we can immediately use. Then there's the waste of motion. That's the unnecessary movement of people in a process. Then there's waiting. That's having to wait for a next step in a process. Then there's overproduction. That's producing more than is demanded by our customers. There's also overprocessing. That's doing more than the customer requires, which is definitely a form of waste. And then finally, there's defects issues with our products that we have to correct and address, which is definitely waste. Let's now move on to Six Sigma. Now let's first talk about what that even means. So Sigma in statistics represents standard deviation. That's how close our data is to the average. So let's go back to the soda example. Let's say that on average we have 17% syrup, which is exactly where we'd like to be. Now the question is, how close are we to that average? Do we sometimes have sodas that are 10% syrup <clears throat> and other times that it's 30%? If so, we might have a, a large standard deviation. That's what we want to avoid. Now let's talk about what a sigma level is. We often talk about this in Six Sigma, and we're trying to reach the sigma level of six. The question is, how many standard deviations fit between the average and a customer limit? So let's to talk about this using an example of a process for shipping orders. Let's say that on average it takes us three days to ship an order. And we have a customer limit of nine days. So if it takes us longer than nine days to ship an order, we're going to upset a customer and they may go to a competitor. To determine our sigma level, we ask ourselves how many standard deviations fit between that average and the closest customer limit. Ideally, we'd like to see six. That's reaching a sigma level of six or six sigma. Now, if we reach Six Sigma, we have 3.4 defects per million opportunities or fewer. And it's almost 100% defect free. And you might be thinking, gosh, that sounds impossible. And it's kind of true, but that, that's okay. There's always room for us to improve. We always want to be striving for something better. We get closer and closer to Six Sigma as we continually make improvements. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the methodology we use on Lean Six Sigma projects. It's called the DMAC cycle. It's how we solve process problems. So there's five phases of it. The first is define. We're gonna define the process we're trying to solve, what issues we're trying to address. And then there's the measure phase, where we try to measure the existing process as it is today. 
We're trying to gather as much data as we can. And then we're going to analyze that data for opportunities for improvement. We're going to then improve the process and then control it over time so those positive changes last for the long term. Now, whenever we frame process problems, we usually use a formula like, th formula like this, y equals f of x, where y is the outputs of our process and x's are the inputs. Now, here's an example. Let's say a output that we're looking for in our process is on-time shipment. It's something we'd like to achieve. Now, that on-time shipment is a function of a few different inputs, things like inventory levels, the availability of carriers, weather and traffic. All of those things could be inputs that affect our output. Now the question is, as we go through the DMAC cycle, we try to narrow down those inputs to figure out which ones we should focus in on. And ideally, we're going to focus in on ones that are fairly easy to fix. They're going to have a positive impact on our process. Now as we go through the DMAC cycle, we often map our process. That's really a key first step. We're trying to understand the process and process mapping is a great way to do that. Now let's finish up by talking about certifications for a moment. So in the world of Lean Six Sigma, certifications are pretty critical. They're gonna be important for your resume. And there's four key certifications. There's a white belt, yellow belt, green belt, and black belt. Now as you move from white to black, you increase in your level of Six Sigma understanding and responsibility. So with the white belt, you kind of just understand the foundational terms of Lean Six Sigma and some of the goals. With a yellow belt, you have a pretty basic, uh, solid basic understanding. With a green belt, you have an intermediate level of understanding and you oftentimes can lead small projects. And with a black belt, you have a deep understanding of Lean Six Sigma and oftentimes lead large cross-functional projects. As a reminder, if you're interested in a free Lean Six Sigma certification course, it's a white belt. You can find that at sixsigmasociety.org.